welcome to my Scarlet O'Hara Right Ruffle Gown tutorial part 4 making the ruffle skirt and the petticoat and where to buy your hoop from even with somebody as short as me we managed to get the 8 tiers on that she has on hers in the film and I'll be showing you throughout this how to make yours and also your belt this is my hoop that I'm using for my Scarlet Hara dress I bought it from this place off eBay and it was from Germany now all the listings in German but the guy who I or lady who I um, talked to last uh, she spoke reasonably very good English and uh, they do post worldwide and the seller is that B R A U double T R E N D S this is actually a 10 ring one he's selling the one I bought was 9 and I can't recommend it enough it's one of the best hoops I have ever bought now for my previous dresses I've bought 6 bone ones from the USA and they have actually, I've always had to cut the last ring off because they've been way too long for me. This one's made out of very, very stiff net. And it is so strong, it is unbelievable. And it has the best shape I've come across so far. What I had to do though, because... I mean, I got a black one because they've put it on auction and I got it a lot cheaper than the buy it now ones. But what I had to do, I had to sew on some white satin ribbon on the bottom ring because you could see that showing through even after we put the petticoat on and the ruffle skirt. All the other rings are fine, you couldn't see them, but it's just that last one tended to show through a bit. But you could see a bit of black here and there. So I thought... And I'll put some ribbon on the bottom, just sew it on, and it worked great. But as I say, even sometimes on auction, his hoops can go up quite pricey, but so I can't recommend it enough because the strength of these hoops, especially if you've got heavy fabrics for a dress or a very heavy petticoat, is so strong. And... Um, they actually came collapsed, you have to thread the rings yourself. So we had enormous fun with that because the bottom strip was over 5 metres long. And we had these wires trailing up the stairs, measuring each one to make sure we, we get the right one in the right place. <laughs> there we go, it's now got a circumference of 4 metres 80 around the bottom. You can reduce it even more if you want to. Or I could even make this bigger. When I first put it on, it was um, nearly 5 metres circumference, which was just way, way too big. Even this is quite a lot bigger than Scarlet's hoop, but it's not as big as it was when we first threaded up the rings. So, there we go. I'll show you the petticoat next, and then we'll be on to the skirt. To make up the hoop petticoat, I'm going to be using the cores and it's number 3609. The hoop that we've got though is over 5 metres in circumference, which is bigger than the pattern. So, instead of using uh, 6 panels that you're supposed to make up this one, not only am I going to be cutting it down into just three panels, one at the front and two at the back, but I've also got to make it a slightly bit bigger so it'll fit our hoop. Uh, this is the uh, petticoat that I've made for our particular hoop, and it's all been gathered onto a small yoked waistband that's going to lay flat because the dress has a stand-up waistband and I really don't need all that bulk around the waist 
and it's in three panels. The first panel is cut on the fold and that goes from one side to the other. And then the back panels are just split into two. And then as usual for making my petticoats I'm just going to put on a piece of velcro hold them in place because that seems to be the strongest thing that you can use and once that's all done I've now attached a two inch piece of lace which goes all the way around the bottom and that's the petticoat finished okay this is my skirt that I'm going to use as my base for putting my ruffles on We've done three seams and this is going to have a, a back opening there so I'll overlap a little bit. And I've made it a bit shorter because the last ruffle on the dress actually overhangs on its own and you can't see any of the base skirt underneath the last ruffle at the very bottom. Okay, I'm making the waistband for my outer skirt uh, with all the ruffles on. This is some Peter Shan tape, which is two and a half centimetres wide. First of all, you've got to measure your waist. Now, it's best to do this, like, um, say, I'm wearing a corset and then the bodice and top is best to um, have somebody measure you fully strapped in how it's actually going to look to see what your final waist is after you've been strapped in because I'm actually 25 waist but by the time I've put my corset on and the bodice it's shrunk me down to a 24 so I've lost an inch so um, what I'll do I have to cut this Peter Sand tape to To 26 inches which is two inches more than the 24 inch waist and because you've got to allow for an overlap at the back next thing I need to do is get my cotton organdy and this time I'm going to cut it 27 inches long which is three centimeters longer because it will have to be turned over at the ends and neatened off and also I will be making it okay it seems to be hopping between inches and centimeters here but I'll be making it eight centimeters wide again to allow for uh, turnovers and neatening off okay this is the pattern piece for the top tier of the skirt it's a full circle the inner circle is just a little bit wider than the circumference of the waist and uh, slightly wider than I want it to be at the moment but I'd rather have it too wide than not wide enough. The next stage will be to fit this into the band, the rest of the frill. Now for the top one I'm not going to gather it, we're just going to do a few little pleats. Okay, I've now got my waistband that I showed you earlier that I was going to cut out. And we've got our top ruffle frill. And I've just pinned it for now on the edge. Leave about a centimetre on the end. So start pinning your ruffle one centimetre in at the top of the band there. And then do the same the other side as well. You need, um, you need to leave an overlap on the band at the end for turning over afterwards and making it look all neat and tidy. Okay, after we did our marks earlier we found that this frill is a bit long. So all together from the very very top here to where we started cutting at 16 but bear in mind that really you should start measuring from bit further down from the edge because this will be turned over and under the waistband at the very edge here. So we're measuring from about there 
to there so on me it finishes at 14 centimeters but it would depend on how tall you are as to how long each frill will be okay before putting the second tier on we decided to put the lace on the bottom but the first ruffle first so I've just been pinning that on and I pinned it on the back because you could see it a lot better you could see right through to the other side and you can see the fabric on the back so you know that your um, lace is going to be straight and level so the next thing we're going to do is go and sew this lead lace edging on properly I'll be back in a moment yeah you can give me as much twirl as you like but be careful doesn't doesn't really want to take off. Well, Not that you're supposed to be doing that anyway. Was the bottom ruffle first that your paws are off? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you're not going to see that once it's done. Okay, you can stop going around in circles now. But I do want your opinion on the top layer there. Okay, I'm now going to start on my second tier ruffle. As you can see, it's pretty long, and this is only the second one down. Because what I've got to do is ruffle it now, and it will be like nearly half the size by the time it's ruffled. Okay, we're just doing a quick trial run and pinning the second tier to near the top of the first tier just to make sure that it's going to work out and the whole of this ruffle has got to fit into the band like so Okay, we've now got our first two ruffles. Um, Mum's just holding it up there, and that's the waistband at the top. We're now going to try and attach the waistband to the top of the skirt. Okay, we're now going to put the petticoat on. We found the halfway mark for the petticoat and the halfway mark for the waistband. So I'll just mark that. Don't mind that. Then we're going to put a pin at the ends. Remembering to leave that one centimetre at the end because you will need that to turn over. There are three marks. So what we're going to do now is gather up the petticoat to fit the waistband. Okay, we've now pinned our waistband to the top edge of the skirt. So it should end up looking like that but without the pins in. After we've sewn it up. Right, so now we're going to put the Petersham into the waistband. Put it snugly down behind there like that. Then you're going to be turning this over at the top to neaten it by about a centimetre. Then the whole thing comes down over the Petersham and over all that gathering and then it's going to be hand stitched like that all the way across okay these uh, this is actually now my fourth yeah fourth ruffle uh, fourth row on the skirt 
what we basically done is we get these very long strips and as you see it goes on and on and on we just draw in one length of fabric to another and we overlock the top edges there that's where it's going to be ruffled along the top there and then the lace will go on the bottom basically you need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of these and as I say this is only the fourth one but by the time it's ruffled they shrink to about half a size ok we're going to do some ruffling of uh, one of the frills absolutely essential uh, to get yourself a ruffler because uh, you're going to do absolutely meters and meters and meters of this so I'll just show you a little bit about the ruffler the little tongue coming through there should be right at the end in the uh, slot called I and then the screw on the side is about halfway down and then what you have to do to thread it up is there's a little prong that sticks out there you have to go down in front up behind and then you force the fabric through a couple of steel plates to come out the end and this is how it goes Here we are, the final piece. This is our very last ruffle. And after ruffling the last piece of fabric I have, it measured 6 metres 40 centimetres. So fingers crossed, if not, I'll be buying some more. Here we are, this is how you can do all the others. It's very important to get your measurements at the very beginning. You can keep checking it with every single layer is a piece of good advice for anybody who wants to try this at home. Is to constantly keep checking after you've done each ruffle to make sure your distances are what you want them to be. Ok, we're now going to make the belt and the buckle. We couldn't find a buckle um, that was ready made, so we actually took this from a charity shop. It was black to begin with, and then we painted it, and we took off the central hook, because we don't need that. Then with our ribbon, we fold it around the central spindle, and then sew it down with uh, a line of sewing to hold it there like that and that's the finished buckle okay this is the belt finish now what we decided to do was when the um, belt comes round and in like that we put a couple of poppers onto the edge so when the belt is on, you can't actually see any joining lines. 